welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Reed. We're four shows from the end. And joining me this week are Nish Kumar, James A. Casper, and Ed Byrne, Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis, and Milton Jones. We start now with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, teams, what's going on here? I thought if the Picture of the Week was going to be anything, it would have been a pound sign hanging from a noose. <laughs> <laughs> I, to, it's my fault. I asked for this picture because I just wanted to check that the camera I put in his hotel room was working. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Keir Starmer getting the news that the bad boys are back on Mock the Week? <laughs> Explain the look of confusion and lack of recognition for, <laughs> for the term bad boys of Mock the Week. Everyone which knows where the bad boys of Mock the Week. Literally no one has ever referred we to We came back to say one final goodbye. Yeah. Bad boys, bad boys, James and Nick. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a really weird episode. Uh, <laughs> also, we were under the impression that more people were coming back. <laughs> We've just been told well, we're the only, the only two ones, the only that have come back. And everyone is really it's busy. A surprising Everyone's... amount of people who never moved on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it, um, Keir Starmer haunted by human face in yellow sofa cushion? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that, that you can have a picture of Keir Starmer on a sofa and the most interesting thing in the picture will be the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure, Dara. Full disclosure. Uh, since I was last on this show, um, I haven't looked at the news once. <laughs> <laughs> what, what year were you last on the show? 2018. Yeah. First things first. Who's that man? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people looking at that picture asking yeah. that question. Yeah. <laughs> if elected Prime Minister, I will make sure that all hotel room carpets go all the way to the door. <laughs> Is he the Prime Minister? <laughs> if elected. Yeah. There was a line in his speech, wasn't there? We need to step up to the plate, no matter what skin colour you are, and the satsuma, the better. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you back, Milton. <laughs> <laughs> You're my bad boy of me. <laughs> He's just going through a speech trying to decide if he has enough quotes from the guy who got us to invade Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of politics there. They are. They are. Politics. OK, uh, can I have the correct answer, please? Is he going through the new version of the national anthem, making sure he's got the new lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> it's Keir Starmer. Thank you very much. Absolutely right to you. Yes. Thanks, Brian. This is Labour Party leader Sir Keir Starmer, pictured in Liverpool going through a speech to the party conference. How do you think the Labour conference went? All they need to do Labour, really, now, is nothing. Right? They just need to keep their mouth shut. So, really, they shouldn't have done speeches, because speeches, you might say something that could be picked apart. They should have all just done DJ sets. <laughs> Well, they, they sort of did, because even in a conference, the, the Labour Party is so intrinsically unable to get through a week without something cringe happening. Even in a conference that went absolutely well, there was video of Wes Streeting uh, singing Angels at a karaoke night, <laughs> and instead of Angels, he sang I'm Loving Starmer instead. <laughs> and I can't do all the work for them, but surely, if you're doing karaoke, you go Starmer, 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 Chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> They're in the usual position of the Labour Party of wanting to not say anything while at the same time teasing up the stuff they may or may not do. It's like those trailers you get when they haven't quite made the film yet, but they give you a little, like, just say, the new Star Wars, and they just put, like, like a mask down and have sort of go, ah, into the voice. <laughs> and you go, oh, is that going to be... Dark? Well, obviously, it wasn't very good Darth Vader. Let's do that again. <laughs> Dara, what that sounded like was somebody <laughs> trying to clean the mask. <laughs> <laughs> I just did that, cos now I know who's been calling me late at night. <laughs> As a trailer. For your last voice of Darth Vader and more what he looks like when he takes the mask. <laughs> oh! I mean, you mean the old, the melty guy with all yeah, kind of like... Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. You already have, Luke, you yeah. already have. <laughs> Him, right. I tell you what, you can tell this is only one woman on this episode. We got to Star Wars in five minutes. 
<laughs> yes, as we know, time against Briggs. The Labour Party do need more young people, but when I set up a group called Child Labour... <laughs> 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 what was Sir Chris Starmer's big policy reveal? Uh, he announced a thing called um, Great British Energy, I think. Yes. And the bad bit is that it's actually going to be run by Paul Hollywood and Prue Lee. <laughs> 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 don't say those names. I don't like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you had a bad time with the old Bake Off, didn't you, yeah. baby boy? Can't remember most of it, it's all a blur. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly know it through memes. <laughs> <laughs> We've had mixed fortunes for the bad boys since we were last on Mark the Week. I yeah. got a show shit canned and he had a breakdown on a cake programme. Little <laughs> <laughs> yeah. news. Did not see what happened to the pound this week? <laughs> <laughs> the pound fell to its lowest level for 50 years. But look on the positive side, if, the, uh, if we are back in the 1970s, that's fine, cos I'm still a child and the whole of Mock the Week is still ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Second time round, we might, we might not book you. Uh... <laughs> Put it this way, my independent financial advisor has moved back with his parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, uh, just a quick shout out to uh, Quasi Quarteng's other half. Uh, I'm not sure if he's married, but he has a partner who presumably sent him off to work on the Friday going, hey, good luck on your big day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tune in, I promise I'll tune in. Like, yeah. And then in the middle of the day, flicked on the table, went, oh. Right. <laughs> and then there's a really awkward evening of, do you, do you want to watch the new? No, you don't. <laughs> it, you I, mean, the, the, uh, the, I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to check our pension. No, I don't want really to check the pension. <laughs> Do you think it was really him, though, or do you think it was a quasi quasi quarto? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to have to cut uh, public spending uh, because they're going to have to make up the shortfall somewhere. And I would suggest that they're going to cut public spending, potentially we replace Liz Truss and quasi Quarteng with two bags of salt and vinegar crisps. <laughs> <laughs> because, first of all, it would save about £316,000 in their individual salaries. And also, given the events of the last few weeks, truly two bags of crisps would have done less economic damage <laughs> if they wouldn't have had mouths to open. <laughs> <laughs> the IMF, they, they, issued, they issued a statement saying that, that was it, fiscal policy should not run at cross-purposes to monetary policy, which is a big shock to those of us who didn't know there was a difference between those two things. <laughs> You know, if they'd told anyone that they were going to do it, they could have staved it off, but they just did it, didn't they? And communication, I think, is genuinely going to be a real problem for this government, because quasi quasi won't do it. Jacob Rees-Mogg sounds like a, a Victorian mill owner announcing redundancies on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and Liz Truss would lose a public speaking competition to the voice that says, Bucket and Mock to aisle three, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a proper problem. She, her speaking style, it's like somebody took a speech, printed it out, then removed all of the punctuation, put it in a salt shaker and just distributed it liberally. <laughs> Hello, I am... <laughs> Liz Truss! <laughs> so, I'm not accusing anyone of being evil, but I think if you were evil, then your manifesto would probably include lifting the, uh, the cap on bankers' bonuses, right? That's... I mean, what are they going to do next? Uh, Outlaw Dalmatian killing. What? <laughs> <laughs> we missed it. Oh, fuck that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, I think Dalmatian think... killing is already oh, outlawed. Yeah, outlawed. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> legalised legalize Dalmatian killing is probably That's what you the word meant I there. Want <laughs> what are they going to do next, people? What are they going to do next? Outlaw Dalmatian <laughs> killing? <laughs> yeah. This country is built on Dalmatian killing. <laughs> killing. Can I just say on Dalmatian killing, you can see where it's heading. Join the dots. <laughs> is more complicated than you think, though, because uh, my whole name is Milton 79 Heathfield Road Jones, because my dad heard you could save tax if you put your house in your son's name. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth the same as it's always been. <sighs> a pound. What, what are you is? talking about? <laughs> Pounds worth a pound, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, but... 
Is what it? about with buying other currencies? Pound to the dollar. Why would I buy another currency? I've got a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Someone might eat the crisps, so you can't have them in charge. <laughs> <laughs> James, can we meet after the show? I've got an investment opportunity I want to take. <laughs> Always, Angela. <laughs> They're coats made of Dalmatian. <laughs> Cost of living's hitting everyone, man. What has it hit you? I'm back on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One last suck of the teeth for you, is it? Uh... That's what you said to me backstage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the boys are Ed, James and Nish. <laughs> yeah. That's Now we play round call. If you've enjoyed my work on Mock the Week, why not come and see me on tour? <laughs> Involves Ed and Milton, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched the Wheel of News, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Our first topic. Let's spin the wheel. First up is Class. Who was coming yeah. Ed Byrne. So, I, uh, I didn't grow up particularly middle class. I've ascended into the middle classes now, but I don't really feel like I belong. I feel like I'm just sort of observing and reporting what middle class people do, like hanging up wooden letters above your oven, spelling out the word bake. <laughs> what has happened to you people? What has happened to you that you suddenly need all these ornate wooden post-it notes in every room in your house, reminding you how to use each room in your house? <laughs> You go, to, you go to a middle-class house now, every room you go into is like going into a, an escape room. <laughs> what, what are we doing here? I don't know. Check the cushions. Oh, apparently we should live our best life. Look <laughs> <laughs> for more clues. Seriously, we rented a cottage a few summers ago, and every room you went into, every room you go into the kitchen, and one wall's got cook, and the other wall's got eat. <laughs> Thanks for the tips, lads. <laughs> Glad I read those in the right order. <laughs> You go into the living room and one wall has got chill and the other wall has got relax. You go into the bedroom above the bed has got love. Oh my God, I'm gonna... <laughs> Just wandering around this cottage going, was this place decorated by the dude from Memento? Seriously. <laughs> so, you know, last day of that holiday, I went to the craft shop. Bought myself some letters. <laughs> they can't withhold your deposits because you added decorations to a property. That's not a rule. <laughs> Went in that bathroom, just put shit above the toilet. <laughs> Tasteful wooden letters, little white lights, Times New Roman. <laughs> Into the shower enclosure with me stencil kiss, just to go cheeky wank. It's gotta be done. <laughs> Small victory, innit? <laughs> Cheers. Thank you very much, Ed That leaves us with Milton. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is anger. OK, Milton. <laughs> Again? <laughs> uh, people are angry. I'm angry, you're angry, Ed's angry about letters. <laughs> uh, the railway workers are angry. I saw them demonstrating in the street the other day. I went out, took them some ice cubes as their placards demanded. Turns out they wanted justice. <laughs> Do you ever have a conversation with someone and towards the end they say, well, I'll let you go? <laughs> and you think, yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. You're trying to make me think that you think that I've got better things to do. <laughs> but in reality, you're saying that you've got better things to do. <laughs> well, next time someone says to you, I'll let you go, say, no. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> they make a sudden dive for the window, grab them by their ankles. <laughs> They're dangling four stories above the car park, scream, this has all been a terrible mistake. Say, OK, <laughs> I'll let you go. <laughs> the AA, the AA, the RAC, don't get me started. <laughs> particular bugbear is a cross between an insect and a mammal. <laughs> <laughs> to be 
honest? Because people say that as well, don't they? And you think, what do you mean, to be honest? You mean everything you've been saying so far... <laughs> ..hasn't been honest? Well, how can we trust what you're going to say now? <laughs> anyway, you've been a great audience. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest... <laughs> ..I'll let you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Points there to Milton Jones. Our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Milton, it's your 50th show and your final show. Which category would you like? What do you mean it's my final show? <laughs> I've just decided. Uh... Thanks a lot. <laughs> Which category do you like, Milton? Betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> Science, please. Sorry. <laughs> Excellent. Your topic is science. The answer is 6.8 million. What is the question? Is it how many knives are in my back? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Is it um, how many of the one million people who live in the Donbass have voted to join <laughs> Russia? <laughs> Is it how many dock leaves would you have to rub on the songwriter's sting before he disappeared? <laughs> <laughs> how far short are we of the 6.8 million people we hope would sign the Save Them Up the Week petition? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many points would I have on my licence if it was illegal to drive whilst devilishly handsome? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Is it how much did my sex tape lose at the box office? <laughs> Is it uh, how many waterlogged Paddington bears are currently filling up landfill in winter? <laughs> <laughs> in the song, The 6.8 Million Days of Christmas, <laughs> how many scarecrows were a skanking? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the number of unread emails in Liz Truss's <laughs> inbox? <laughs> Is it how many Russian students live in the city of undergrad? In what position now is Prince Harry in line to the throne? <laughs> <laughs> is it in a few years' time how many Russian students will live in the Russian city of postgrad? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have the correct answer, please? It's how far away is the asteroid that NASA have managed to knock off its course? Absolutely. Thank yeah. you very, very much. Very good. Yes. Yes, question I was looking for was, how many miles away from Earth did NASA strike an asteroid with a hypersonic spacecraft? So why do they do this? It's the plot of Armageddon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah under yeah. deep impact. It's more of a deep impact man, actually. I was always more deep impact. Never know what your wife hey. said. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to have yeah. already lowered the tone in this. Mm. I'm looking forward to going into the science bit now <laughs> and having you be all, oh, I know about science, I'm a clever guy, even though a few weeks ago me and Nish saw you walk into a room and uh, tip a pint of ice cream upside down thinking it would stay in the cup and it fell on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it uh, would I, be a real yeah. shame uh, if somebody had brought along uh, a photo of exactly that happening. <laughs> <laughs> Literally right there. <laughs> Walk us through this, science boy. OK. <laughs> there, there's, there, lacto there. there's lactose intolerance and then they're throwing <laughs> a bit. In, 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 in Dairy Queens, in Canada and possibly in America, where they, do get, they pour your ice cream and then they turn it upside down quite dramatically yeah. and then go, yep, there it goes, and hand it to you, right? Yeah. And then what, I... Demonstrate its thickness? Or did did, the yeah, it's just out... And yeah, throws, it, it? it fills a cup, like, whatever. And then I walked all the way from the Dairy Queen Two, like, ten minutes later, I arrived at the cup and I said, oh, they do this amazing thing. And I turned it over and, forgetting <laughs> that my hand had been holding it for ten minutes as I walked back from the oh, place. Okay. So it paused for a second. There yeah. was a delicious second where it held and then it started to move. Uh, <laughs> oh, darling. Hey, Brian uh, Cox isn't watching this. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then it moved all over my hotel room floor. Uh, that's me facing the window because I laughed so much I turned into the guy from the end of the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> <laughs> At the point that that happened, did you go, I shall call it gravity? <laughs> <laughs> no? It was pretty amazing, though. It, it, like, they, it fired, was they, they fired a satellite at, at it, and it filmed it. They filmed it, you know, it took photographs as it was zooming in to the asteroid. 
and it would be the great sigh of relief when it first started to zoom in and they didn't see a load of clangers all going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read that the, so one of them's dimorphous, and I can't remember the other one. Yeah. And I wrote it down because it said it took roughly 11 hours and 55 minutes to circle its 780 metre wide partner. And it just reminded of me, of me and my husband when we try and have sex after dinner. <laughs> You de- you're circling around to that. Circling around 11 hours. And, then, and, then he, and he deflects you uh, by changing your velocity <laughs> yeah. until eventually you're drawn into a tighter and tighter orbit. Oh man, I'm horny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Why did this show get so horny? <laughs> well, we finally allowed women on. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, why might some Tesla drivers have sore fingers? All Is the it... wanking. <laughs> Come on. I'm getting the point you're making, but I don't see, I don't know the mechanics of that actually work. Uh, <laughs> fingers are very sore. Uh, <laughs> I, no, no, it, it, it just it maybe... sense. That's how I do it, like a squibble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or is it perhaps just from going on Twitter to blindly defend every single thing Elon Musk does ever? I don't so, know if that's in I think you can buy the car without thinking it has anything to do with Musk. Musk seems so... Oh, that's because you have a Tesla, Dara. Yeah, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thing, whereas I do think he is strange. Uh, He's pres- holding his face on. <laughs> <laughs> do you think if he was involved in a scandal that went on and on for ages, it would be called Elongate? <laughs> <laughs> Why, though, are their fingers sore? The story is they've had to... Tesla have recalled 1.1 million cars in the US yep. because as the windows go up, if they don't stop, they're meant to stop if they hit an obstruction or something. Yeah, like your, and they hand, don't. Like your hand. So yeah. if your hand is in the window, they just crush your hand. You have the you have your hand down, and then the thing would push it up. All right. The, uh, well, and you're thinking, I'm just going to leave my hand here for about 15 seconds. Let's see how this goes. Stop. 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 Yeah, Sorry, Dara. Are, are you <laughs> blindly defending everything you've done? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was just thinking about the deleted scene from Titanic where she puts her hand on the window and chops her fingers off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack. Ow, my fingers! Can I get onto the board with you? She says, no, there's no space here. He goes, there is, because your fingers aren't taking up any space. <laughs> so if you just move along with your palms, uh, <laughs> come on to the rest of the door, and I'll be OK. Kay. Is that OK? Can I come on, Rose? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. I've got no fingers left. You're not getting on the board. Please! Uh, she's that... actually called Rose, cos when she was on the door, uh, she had to row with her arm. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the prize goes to Andrew here in Milton. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is things you wouldn't hear on a travel show. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm a British comedian, and I'm doing a travel show without my mum. (laughs) Venice. Everywhere is a toilet. (laughs) Well, what can I tell you about the Baltic? Never walk through long grass, just in a pair of shorts. (laughs) Welcome to The Jokes on Me. The only travel show hosted by a flat earther. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the misadventures of Ramesh Ranganathan. (laughs) I'm not Ramesh, but he's too busy to do it these days. (laughs) Based on what I can tell, most of you can't tell the difference between us. In this series, I'm going to show you my favourite bits of the Netherlands. Welcome to Hugh's Nether Region. (laughs) Zealand. Apparently, Lord of the Rings was filmed here, but they never mention it. (laughs) Yes, I am having a great time in Pyongyang. Everything cool, everybody has enough food, (laughs) 
Very nice. Oh, my God, no, please! <laughs> As my hot air balloon floats majestically towards the top of the shard, I'm realising what a bad idea this was. <laughs> What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. With that in mind, apologies to the owner of the cucumber and Johnny Vegas. Paris, <laughs> <laughs> city of fine art, fine cuisine, but ruined by being full of French people. <laughs> Here I am on top of Machu Picchu. And a moment ago, the inventor of the Fitbit just fell off. And yes, he did hit 10,000 steps on the way down. <laughs> And here, on the French coast, the perfect beach footwear was invented by designer Philippe Fillon. <laughs> I said it, you are, <laughs> It is over 2,000 years since Vesuvius erupted here at Pompeii, and it's unlikely to happen at Bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you don't provide breakfast, this is just an Air B. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> On this episode, we're in Malaysia because this, that's right, your licence fee paid for another two comedians to go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> good trip, wasn't it? It was a good trip, that one. <laughs> I'm here in Paris for Fashion Week. They've covered the Arc de Triomphe with camouflage netting. Can't see the attraction myself. <laughs> The next topic is commercials that never made it to air. At WeBuyAnyCar.com, we buy fuck off hasn't even got wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Quasi gamble responsibly. <laughs> the Happy Meal. It's neither of those things. <laughs> From the people who bought you Nutribullet, the Nutri Gun. Find nutrition into a hole of your choosing today. <laughs> <laughs> Oral B. But on the other hand, you got an A for anal. <laughs> <laughs> Head and shoulders. The perfect shampoo for people with hairy shoulders. <laughs> Do you want children to learn about deadly skin diseases? then buy the adventures of a lap of a pig. <laughs> Kids and grown-ups love it so, the comedy of Frankie Boyle. <laughs> Come back, Frankie! <laughs> I'm Nick Clegg, and I think you should join the metaverse. I had to join it to move to a different reality to find one single person who didn't think I was a twat. <laughs> And Rex, the toilet paper for you and your dog. Come on, Rex. <laughs> Do you suffer from male pattern baldness? Sucks to be you. <laughs> Pepperami. It's a bit of an animal. Specifically, it's dick. <laughs> Why is it called Special K? It's ketamine. <laughs> Why not travel by megabus? Now I'm up the week's ending, Dara Brin might actually be on it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> How do I look like this? Well, it's called the Witness Relocation Scheme. <laughs> The Russian army needs you, cos all the guys we hired died. <laughs> can Nish and I survive Mock the Week without Ed Gamble? Cos who, yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the end of that round, the points go to Angela Hugh Milton. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Nish Kumar, James A. Catherine Edward. <laughs> Commiserations to Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis, and Mitchell Jones.
Thanks for watching. I'm Darreen. Three more to go. See you next week. Good night. So the crew are back, meaning the great British public helping out with the jokes and banter. Romish is in the house and his wonderful mum. The Ranga Nation, Sunday at 10 on BBC Two.